notice this little phrase at the bottom here called intelligent design. And this is an important concept. A lot of students have heard about intelligent design. It's also known as creation science. Um, it has been ruled a belief system by the Supreme Court. Just FYI, it is, a, it is not considered science by the scientific community. It is considered a belief system. They believe that naturalism is a threat to religion and must be defeated. And that there are gaps in the scientific knowledge uh, prove the existence of God. So the things that science doesn't have an answer for thus is explained by God. God did it and that's the end. Uh, they look for evidence for this. They look for concepts called irreducibly complex systems. And what this means are they're looking for systems that they believe are too complex to have evolved. Some classic examples include the vertebrate eye, the quote perfect human body, and the bacterial flagellum. Those are some classic examples. So far, all of these have been refuted by science. They've all been proposed and scientists have gone, hey, that's a great idea, I'm gonna study that. And we've actually discovered the mechanisms behind that and they've won some pretty fantastic scientific awards for that. So just saying, keep the ideas coming, people. Um, so a lot of theologians also have issues with the idea of intelligent design, believe it or not. For much of Judeo-Christianity, faith is a central component. Faith is necessary. We are required to have faith in God. So many argue that God would not have created a world in which you could prove his existence scientifically. Because if you could prove the existence of God, why would you need faith? It would negate the necessity for faith. The reality is, is that intelligent design isn't science. And because it's not science, it doesn't belong in a science classroom. And there is no scientific controversy concerning evolution. So when we teach kids that there is a scientific controversy, we're really being dishonest and we're undermining the very principles that science is founded on. When we talk about teach both theories and let the kids decide, we're not teaching on magic and physics. We're not teaching on astrology and astronomy. We're only saying evolution and creationism, even though they're not even opposites. We're presenting this false idea that they can't have both by teaching them two different versions. And there's another reason why it's a problem. And it comes from this. This is the first part of the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. And there are two clauses to this. The second is the free exercise clause that states that the government cannot prevent you from exercising your religion. The first is the Establishment Clause the states that, that states that the government cannot support any religious doctrine in any way. So really what this means is freedom of religion means all religions. So if we were to teach a creation story in a publicly funded mandatory science class, which creation story do we choose? The Iroquois? that believes that the earth is formed on the back of a tortoise. The Hindu version that believes that the earth was formed when Brahma took the lotus blossom that grew from Vishnu's belly and turned it into a, the earth. Or the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster and who believes that the earth was created when the Flying Spaghetti Monster had one too many beers. It's officially a religion. People have officially declared it as their belief. Now, the religion was created satirically because a father whose daughter was in her science class and they were teaching creation stories, were teaching the Christian creation story as science. <coughs> and he said, if you're going to teach this story, you have to teach mine too. It's not fair. Why are you teaching this one over another? So he satirically created this religion and it's hilarious. I highly recommend looking it up. They're called Pastafarians, in case you didn't know. If we were to teach creation stories, we would have to teach them in a comparative religions class by an objective party, and we would have to teach all creation stories. That's the only way we can do this ethically and morally.